Carl Jung was the first outsider to join Freud's inner circle. He wasn't Jewish, not born in and around Vienna, and wasn't even Austrian. He was born and raised in Switzerland. He was an only child who was not good at relationships, but did well in school. He felt closer to his mother, but described her as having two personalities, humorous and unpredictable. Some suggest Jung's interest in psychiatry was because his mother was schizophrenic. They suggest that his mother may have been hospitalized when he was three, but there's little evidence that it was for schizophrenia. Some suggest that Jung was schizophrenic. Others believe he was just a misunderstood genius. There are proponents on each side of the issue. Jung's ideas were vague and disconnected, and he referred to himself as having two personalities, one in this life and one from a previous century in which he was an old man. In addition, the complexity of his ideas and the incorporation of occult and mythological imagery can be seen as creativity or pathology. I suppose the real issue is whether Jung was describing unusual worlds of thought or living in them. There's no question Jung was imaginative. He tended to see the world and himself in a larger context. Even his autobiography, which was published after his death, was as much mythology as historical truth. Jung had a vision of a monstrous flood that would cover most of Europe, though not the mountains of Switzerland. The vision was followed by several weeks of recurring dreams about rivers and floods of blood. It was not a child's dream. Jung was 38 at the time. When World War I began, Jung viewed his vision as having been a prediction. Jung pursued many arts. He painted, sculpted, drew, and wrote. Although he explored many fields, he was always looking for themes and commonalities. For Jung, everything had a meaning. One of his therapeutic techniques, called amplification, involved expanding every detail of a dream into associations. Instead of Freud's free association, jumping from thread to thread, Jung preferred to elicit multiple associations from a single item. The more associations that can be made, the easier it was to discover underlying themes. And the more themes that can be discovered, the easier it is to find archetypes, overriding universal themes that impact behavior. One pair of archetypes Jung repeatedly encountered was persona, outward image, and shadow, inward self. He maintained that people protect themselves and influence others by presenting a persona that is more presentable than the reality in which they live. Although we don't intentionally lie, we do try to mask the realities of our inner pain. Jung would say that we do this unconsciously. Jung differs from Freud on what is unconscious. For Jung, people have both a personal unconscious, undiscovered personal experiences, and a collective unconscious, undiscovered universal experiences. The collective unconscious is the repository of all human knowledge, including pre-human experiences. It is filled with primordial images, memories from our ancestral past. For Jung, the goal of life, and much of the fun and pain of life, is the discovery of what the universe is trying to tell us through this collection of symbols and images. Also open to discovery is our personality types. Jung proposed four basic functions, sensation, intuition, thinking, and feeling. And they can be combined into two primary attitudes, introversion and extroversion, to create eight personality types. There are several personality tests based on Jungian assumptions, including the thematic apperception test, the Rorschach, which is a series of ink blots, and the more recent Myers-Briggs. These tests, like Jung's theory, are quite creative and broad. Although critics point out the terrible test retest reliabilities of the instruments, supporters point to the wealth of creative data they produce.